did you move to Hong Kong? So it's been almost a year. I moved here in May 2019. Have you visited Hong Kong previously? I uh, only transited through Hong Kong airport, unfortunately. <laughs> Could you tell us about your first impression of the city? Oh, well, uh, my first impression was one of a vibrancy. I thought the, it uh, reminded me a bit of Mumbai in, in India, you know, it was alive and uh, kicking and, and really every street corner was filled with uh, every part of the world, it seemed. What word comes to mind when you think of Hong Kong? International. Is there anything about India that you miss? Yes, I'll be truthful, I miss India's street food. <laughs> what is your favorite travel spot in India? Well, I would have to say Kashmir and um, uh, within that Gulmarg, which is one of my favorite memories of vacation with family. What is your favorite Indian food? It is a South Indian dish called idli. Uh, it's little rice and lentils cakes and uh, had with sambar, which is a fury uh, kind of a watery curry from the south of India. It's my favorite dish in the world. I could have it three times a day. <laughs> So where can locals go try this here? So many Indian restaurants uh, in Hong Kong. Some of them even specialize in South Indian food. And, uh, you know, although I'm from the north, but I always go in whenever, whichever city, I try to look for a restaurant which specializes in South Indian cuisine. And uh, unsurprisingly, I find it almost everywhere I've been. What are some of your favorite Indian films or films about India? Ah, so I know that there is a few Indian films which have been very popular in, in Hong Kong and um, they also happen to be my favorite. So there is uh, Dangal, which is a movie on wrestling and has some wonderful messages on gender empowerment. There is Lagan, which is a classic and it went on to uh, be shortlisted for the Oscars. There is Tari Zabimpar, which I think has universal message in uh, for a lot of Asian countries who put too much stress in my view on academics. So for exploring the various creative aspects of children, uh, there is Chak De India, which is um, a movie again about sports. And I thought that it displayed unity and diversity about India beautifully. And there is one movie called Stanley Ka Dabba, which is, uh, I thought I enjoyed watching it with my daughter. It's a wonderful kids movie and many others. <laughs> Who is your favorite Indian artist? So there have been a lot of Indian artists, um, uh, in, you know, who have become highly acclaimed the world over. Um, and I could name a few and they're, you know, somebody that would need no introduction. But personally, my favorite Indian artists are the unsung kind of tribal artists who are promoting Indian uh, folk art forms and who are finally getting recognition now by being recognized. So we recently did, in fact, um, uh, festivals with celebrated um, art forms like uh, Varli and Patachitra and Gond and Madhubani. And I had the privilege of meeting some of these artists. So I would say my favorite Indian artist is the anonymous Indian folk artist. What is a book by an Indian author you would recommend? Oh, it has to be um, The Discovery of India by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India. I think it is, it is something which um, is like a primer for anybody who wants to understand modern India. Who do you admire in Indian history? So, um, my favorite character, I don't want to call him character because he's really a person with great historical importance to India. But as a child, he seemed like a character to me. Um, he was so kind of awe-inspiring, is Emperor Ashok. And uh, to me, he was the person who brought together this large parts of the subcontinent and uh, whose message of peace was, in fact, taken uh, by the modern Indian nation, in fact, we're sitting here so I can point to it, by the national emblem of India today. This is the Ashok Stamp. This is in the, uh, a pillar that Emperor Ashok had built, and this is uh, from there. And every single day, we, we recognize the, the contribution and the message of Emperor Ashok, so he would be my favorite historical figure. What is your favorite book or movie from or about Hong Kong? So many. And um, the one that first comes to my mind is, the, is Bruce Lee's classic Fist of Fury. I grew up uh, with uh, completely, uh, you know, um, idolizing Bruce Lee like many children did at that time. And in more recent times, the one that I enjoyed with great gay abandon was uh, Kung Fu Hustle, <laughs> which I thought was great fun. And I am hoping to discover a lot more of Hong Kong movies because I know that the Hong Kong cinema has uh, is renowned the world over for the quality of the movies that it makes. 
What is your favorite food or restaurant here? So last, since I moved here uh, last year, um, unfortunately, the events in Hong Kong have not really allowed for me to explore uh, the restaurants in Hong Kong as much as I would have liked to. But the one that I do frequent a bit is um, a place called the Peak Lookout. It is on the peak. And I love the, the, the food, I love the environment, and I think it's my favorite for now. Do you have a place you regularly hang out at? <laughs> Other than the lookout, I, I actually hang out a lot in Wan Chai Market. And I, it reminds me of home and uh, the, the hustle and the bustle and the kind of vibrancy of the whole market and the fact that you can find pretty much anything that you want. So yeah, I like going there. What is your favorite activity to do in Hong Kong? I would say hiking. It is something that I enjoy doing a lot um, in my college days and uh, rediscovered it now, especially because I have the good fortune of uh, living right on uh, Black's Link, which is one of the you know famous hiking trails of Hong Kong. So that's something that uh, we as a family, my husband and my daughter, all three of us enjoy doing together. Is there something you would like to try here that you haven't yet? Yes, I want to try the Impossible Burger. <laughs> As a vegetarian, I, um, you know, heard that apparently this is something that I should try. I haven't done it yet, so I look forward to that. Do you have a favorite Cantonese word or phrase? So I do, and that might require a slight explanation. My, my favorite phrase is actually Gayao, add oil. And I know that it has got associated with certain events of last year. But to me, it reminded me of the phrase Chak De, you know, in India, which essentially is um, energizing call for action and to me it, it speaks more about the solidarity and the spirit of the Hong Kong people and not necessarily being associated with any type of person or, or movement or anything at all I think it speaks to me about the spirit of Hong Kongers and that it can be used for anything it can be used to mobilize people for uh, for anything positive that that they feel strongly about so it was very evocative and I think it is going to be my lasting memory of of Hong Kong and my favorite phrase. What do you love most about Hong Kong? I'll be truthful uh, as, as a person coming from a family of lawyers and judges. Um, my favorite thing about Hong Kong is its rule of law. I think the fact that it doesn't just say it or speak it or you know it actually lives it and, and it, it was on display even for example during the COVID-19 restrictions um, while many other countries were making kind of these announcements, uh, the Hong Kong government would ensure that the required legislation is passed and it's transparently available. And uh, in, in its everyday kind of conduct, the judiciary which is of, of Hong Kong, which is famous for, for its uh, quality and its fairness, I think to me that's the most impressive thing about Hong Kong that I love the most. Uh, its uh, spirit as well as its action on the rule of law. And lastly, who would you like to see as the next speaker from India at Asia Society? That's an easy one. I've been thinking about asking uh, Asia Society for it. I would love to see Ratan Tata come here. I think that he is uh, somebody who's been such an exemplary uh, business leader. In fact, he's been so much more. And his lifetime of experiences and and views on, on so many aspects of life, not just business, would be something that I'm sure a lot of people would love to hear. I was certainly would. Thank you, Consul General. Thank you. It's been my utter pleasure. And uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, giving us this opportunity to be part of this wonderful initiative. Thank you.